people how are you welcome to our lesson today today we shall talk about uh, the role the role of growth hormones and in plants in growth and development in plants eh? the role of hormones in growth and development in plants that is our key business today. I hope we shall actually move together and enjoy the content. Now, what are ho growth hormones? So plant growth hormones are actually chemicals that are produced in small quantities or small amounts in plants. And they usually regulate growth and development. They usually regulate growth and development in plants most of them are usually produced at the tip of the shoot that is the tip of the uh, shoot and the tip of the root so they can be produced at the root tip or shoot tip the shoot shoot tip is a stem eh? okay and the root tip and they usually move from these tips either downwards or upwards okay so they are usually produced in small quantities especially in root tips and they include the followings the following uh, plant hormones so the first one which we shall discuss is about the indole acetic acid indole acetic acid is also known as auxins auxins now what actually are the roles of the auxins? Auxins usually influence growth and development by the following activities. One, they promote cell division. So presence of auxins leads to cell division and also increase in number of cells. This leads to increase in number of cells. Okay. And also they are responsible for tropic responses. Uh, most of you have uh, witnessed that when you grow a plant eh, near a window, it will tend to grow towards the window. It will tend to grow towards the, towards the window. That is what we learned uh, in science as phototropism. Is it clear? Or when you actually plant a, a, a seedling or you take a seedling and then you place it horizontally like this. These are the leaves. And this one here is the root. You're able to see that it will grow towards the, towards the root, uh, towards the, 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 the ground. That is what we learned as geotropism. So all these tropisms are produced or are controlled by auxins. So auxins bring about um, tropisms. Is it clear? Good. Now, um, apart from that, they lead to cell elongation. They bring about cell elongation. Okay. They bring about cell elongation. Uh, and they also prevent formation of abscission layer, hence preventing premature fruit fall. So what is an abscission layer? This is actually a layer formed uh, at the petiole. I'm assuming this here. Okay. I'm assuming that uh, this is the branch and uh, this is a fruit. So for this fruit to fall, there must be a layer formed here. This layer is what we call abscission layer. So the abscission layer is composed of dead cells, eh, which when formed here will make the fruit to fall when it is mature. Now, auxins are very, very important because they will prevent formation of these uh, this particular abscission layer hence preventing premature fruit fall apart from that auxins also facilitate growth of ovaries into fruits without fertilization a process called parthenocarpy auxins brings about parthenocarpy which is um, growth or development of a fruit from ovaries without fertilization Hence, they can actually be uh, used commercially, okay, in production of pineapples, bananas, and seedless oranges on large scale. 
you might have actually eaten some oranges which do not have seeds but they are very sweet very delicious eh? okay so if you apply some auxins it will lead to formation of those ovaries conversion of the ovaries into fruits without even fertilization from occurring that therefore we can actually use auxins to uh, induce induce um, fruit formation without fertilization of the ovaries okay another role of um, auxins is that it initiates initiate flowering it initiates flowering it brings about a, a, a onset of flowering and it inhibits growth of lateral buds what does that mean when auxins are produced usually they are produced at the tip at the tip of uh, the shoot I'm assuming this is my shoot okay so auxins are usually produced at the tip of the shoot here is it clear now when they're produced here they usually move downwards so whenever they move downwards they will prevent formation of lateral buds okay so they inhibit formation of lateral buds this may lead to a condition called apical dominancy which shall discuss later okay so we've said that um uh it actually inhibits growth of lateral buds hence leading to what we call apical dominancy and also it stimulates adventitious or lateral roots so if it is applied on the roots it initiates the development of adventitious roots or lateral roots okay and lastly it can be used in selective weed killing when applied in large quantities to the selected plants by inducing rapid and distorted growth so suppose maybe you want to kill a certain weed let's say blackjack or a wandering jew it is in your field you can apply uh, auxins over the weed then the weed will actually grow rapidly and in a distorted way hence ending up quickly killing it so that is a role of auxin now we want to go to the second hormone gibberellins 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 so gibberellins are usually synthesized in the young apical leaves buds seeds and root tips this is where gibberellins is found so examples we have the gibberellic acid eh? or GA3 what are their effects their effects include one so production of gibberellins promote cell elongation and rapid cell division it also promotes increase in length of internodes it promotes increase in length of internodes promote increase in length of internodes okay it also promotes fruit formation without fertilization just like auxins it promotes fruit formation without fertilization a process called parthenocarpy so parthenocarpy is the process whereby fruits are formed without fertilization okay it also reduces root growth it breaks seed dormancy when applied it will make seeds to germinate hence breaking seed dormancy hence breaking seed dormancy and also it promotes leaf growth so those were the functions of gibberellins let us go to uh, cytokinins now cytokinins which are also known as kinins or kinetin or zeatin but you can actually grasp the first one cytokinins are synthesized in the roots seeds and fruits and their main role or is breaking of seed dormancy as we have seen uh, under gibberellins so they break seed dormancy they promote flowering they promote leaf and fruit growth they promote cell division it stabilizes protein and chlorophyll synthesis promotes root formation okay it promote a root formation on a shoot so if you have for example a stem cutting eh? let's say for example cassava you want to go and plant the cassava uh, you usually use the stem 
So if you want the, the, the stem to produce root at a, roots at a faster rate, you normally treat it with cytokinins. This will lead to formation of some roots on the stem easily. Okay? Good. Now, others include promote lateral root growth. It also delays aging. It also delays aging or senesis. It delays aging or senesis in leaves. However, low concentration will encourage leaf senesis. So senesis refers to aging. Eh? Sometimes if you walk around the compound, you find some leaves uh, have fallen down. Some of them are yellow in color. Others actually have or even dried up. So the yellow leaves have actually aged. Okay? So the hormone that prevents them from falling or from actually aging is what we call uh, the yeah the cytokinins okay now normal concentration of these uh, hormones leads to increase enlargement or in leaves eh? they also promote cell division along alongside auxins they break seed and bad dormancy they can be used to break seed and bud dormancy. So if seeds cannot germinate, they can be uh, made to germinate by application of the cytokinins. And also, they stimulate lateral bud development and growth of side branches. Unlike, um, unlike um, auxins, eh? auxins will say that when they are produced at the tip, they prevent growth of lateral buds this is the apical bud and these two here are the lateral buds so when auxins are produced up here we've said as they move down they will inhibit or pro uh, prevent growth of the lateral buds these ones here the lateral buds but now cytokinins is different whenever it is applied it facilitates growth of the lateral buds it stimulates growth of the lateral and um, and uh, lateral and side branches and also it enhances stomatal opening it makes the stomata to open lastly cyt synthetic cytokinins are used by florists to keep flowers fresh okay good now let us move to ethylene in most cases people call it ethene Yes, especially for those who are uh, chemists. Eh? So, in most cases, it is produced by all parts of the plant, but it is usually found in greater quantities by, by the fruits. It is produced in gaseous form. So, ethylene or ethene, is it ethene or ethene? It's ethene. Okay. Okay. Ethene, it's alkene. Eh? Yeah, it's alkene. So it's not ethene, it's al, uh, it's ethene or ethylene. So ethylene are, uh, is usually produced by all parts of the plant, but in most cases it is produced by the fruits. So it is usually produced in gaseous form, and it usually accelerates ripening in fruits. In fruits, it makes plants uh, fruits to to ripen. Above all, it encourages fruit fall by form formation or accelerating formation of abscission layer. We have talked about abscission layer, which leads to aging eh, or senesis. So this particular ethylene, let us assume that um, here you have a, a, a fruit. Here you have a, a mango fruit. Okay, this is the branch. And here this is the petiole where our fruit has been attached. So when ethylene is applied to this particular fruit, it will lead to formation of an abscission layer here. So this abscission layer here will actually, will actually, it is made up of some cells which usually withers and finally die. So when it, the cells die off, the abscission layer leads to um, the, 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 the fruit falling down. Is it clear? Good. So we are saying that um, 
it encourages fruitful or leaf fall by accelerating formation of abscission layer. Okay. Now, apart from that, it induces thickening in stem by producing cell division and differentiation at the cambium meristems. So ethylene also is very important in um, uh, uh, secondary growth because it leads to thickening in stem by promoting cell division. It also inhibits stem elongation. It inhibits stem elongation. It also inhibits root growth. It inhibits root growth and promotes flowering in pineapples. Finally, it promotes germination in certain seeds, hence breaking seed dormancy. And commercially produced ethylene can be applied together with oxy to promote fruit ripening. So if you have some fruits, you have a farm, you can actually apply ethylene and um, uh, the fruits will uh, ripe very fast. Now, uh, our next hormone is abscisic acid or abscisin. So abscisic acid are usually synthesized in the stem, leaves, fruits, and seeds. Okay? But its effects are antagonistic to those of other hormones. That is, abscisic acid causes bird dormancy. What does that mean? It makes the buds, either the lateral bud or the apical bud, from growing. It also encourages fruitful and leaf senescence. It encourages fruitful and aging of the leaves. High concentration causes closing of sto stomata. High concentration of abscisic acid causes um, closing of the stomata. Apart from that, it causes seed dormancy. It inhibits cell elongation. Abscisic acid also inhibits stem growth, which is important during drought and in waterlogged situation. It also promotes closing of stomata to prevent water loss. And synthetic abscisic acid is applied on fruit trees after ripening to promote fruit fall, just like ethylene. Good. Now, our last component is to talk about traumatin and florigen. So, traumatin heals wounds in stems of plants by formation of colors. It leads to colors formation. If, for instance, a plant is damaged, either by use of farm tools, eh, you will find out that the wound is, usually there is a, a material which covers it with time. That is what we call colors. Eh? And that one is um, triggered by traumatin. Lastly, we have um, florigen. Florigen actually is a hormone which uh, promotes flowering, which promotes flowering. So in a summary, what are the general application of plant hormones in agriculture? One, we have said some hormones induce root growth in stem cuttings. Others, like auxins, um, are used in selective weed killing. Some are used to encourage sprouting of lateral buds. Others, like uh, cytokinins, uh, are used in breaking seed dormancy. Others, like um, uh, auxins, induce parthenocopy. Others, like ethylene, accelerate ripening of, ro of fruits. Others, like florigens, promote flowering. But others also can cause acid dormancy like uh, gibberellic uh, yeah, acid so far so good um, I know we have done something so nice so we shall stop there for today about uh, plant growth hormones let us meet again in the next session bye bye